Hey, so today I want to show you how to build an Arduino powered clock. It looks a bit like this. It'll run off a 5 volt stepper motor and um, it'll take every 10 minutes. Now yours could be different, yours could take every minute or every hour as you please, but I found that mine was best for that. It's quite a fun project, it's a great way to learn how to use the Arduino stepper library, it's also a great way to use, learn how to use Arduino stepper motors, um, how to use microcontrollers and how to program. I really recommend it, it's a nice easy one to try, just a bit of cardboard and some hot glue. Let's get started. Okay, this project has three main components, a microcontroller, a stepper motor, and a stepper motor controller. It doesn't really matter which one you use, I'm going to be using the Arduino Micro, a 5 volt stepper motor, and that one's pair board, but pretty much any will do. I'm also going to be using an Arduino Uno just to make sure my code works correctly before I solder it to the Arduino Micro. Once we have all these components, we'll wire them up in this order. Okay, so we're going to start by connecting ground on the stepper motor controller to ground on the Arduino. Now repeat this for the two 5 volt pins. Lastly, we need to connect all the data pins together. Pin 6 on the Arduino goes to pin 1 on the motor controller, pin 7 goes to pin 2 on the motor controller, pin 8 goes to pin 3 on the motor controller, and lastly pin 9 goes to pin 4 on the motor controller. So that's what everything should look like once everything's installed correctly, and now we're going to look at how to install the library. Okay, so you want to start off by going to Attempted Fun with Engineering and copying the code at the top of the page, the .h file. Once you've got that copied, open your Word Editor, I'm going to be using Notepad++, but Notepad will work just fine, and paste it in there. Now click File and click Save As. Once you're in the Save As option, name it Steppermotor.h and make sure that S and M are both capitalized, and now save it to your desktop. Now you're going to want to navigate back to the website and grab the second piece of code at the bottom. This is the CPP file, and we're going to do the exact same thing we did with the H file, except we're going to name it stepamoda.cpp, not forgetting to capitalize S and M. Now go to your desktop, and you should see the two files we just created there. Now you're going to create a new file called stepamoda. Now drag and drop both the files we just created into that one. Lastly, we're going to go find our Arduino libraries file, and put the stepamoda file into it. Once that's all finished, go to your Arduino IDE, load this test code, and if it compiles properly, you installed everything correctly. And now we can begin solving it all together. Now we want to work out how big the clock face is, and to do that we're going to need a little bit of math to help us. Let's start by saying that every time the clock ticks, it will move one centimeter. This will help us work out the circumference of the circle later. Next we need to work out the amount of minutes in between each clock tick. Let's start with one minute per tick. This will give us a circumference of 720 centimeters, which is way too big. We get this by going 60, the amount of minutes in an hour, times 12, the amount of hours in a 12 hour clock. The perfect ratio that I decided to use was 10 centimeters per tick, which gave me a nice manageable circumference of 72 centimeters, which wasn't too big or too small. Once you've drawn and cut out two circles with a diameter of 72 centimeters, we can start working on the electronics casing. Now that we're done with the electronics casing, we can start finishing off the clock face. We'll start by drawing two parallel lines. The width isn't important, but the length has to be 72 centimeters. And we'll mark a spot every centimeter. Each spot we mark will get its own time, starting at 12, then 1210, then 1220, then 1230, all the way down to 1150. Once we've marked off all the times, we can cut it out and glue it in between the two circles we made earlier. And you should end up with something that looks a bit like this. Now, this is the final step. What you could do from here is just take the motor shaft on the edge there and glue it straight to this. What I've chosen to do is to make this little rectangle that can go through here, through the square holes I made, and actually connect the motor shaft 
allowing me to take off the clock face if I want to ever exchange it or if there's ever an issue with it. Um, either way would work. The one, this one takes a bit more time to do because you have to make the square and measure it out, but I mean, it's the same outcome. You can find all the measurements and code on my Instructables page, which I've linked in the description below. Tune in next time when I show you to make version 2 of my portable Raspberry Pi emulation station, and thanks so much for watching. See you next time.